essentially what's happening is Adobe is being sued for using dark patterns to sell people on subscriptions that they don't fully understand. And a dark pattern is a tool that some unscrupulous um, companies will use when trying to sell online where they build their websites in such a way that rather than being user friendly, the websites are, des the websites are designed to trick customers into making a purchase that they weren't intending or um, continue browsing content and when they're actually looking to disengage from a service or unsubscribe. Um, it's essentially visual tricks that companies use through poor user experiences and poor layout to force customers to interact with their services in really frustrating ways and spend more money than they otherwise would have. And uh, these dark patterns are definitely not new. If you go back, you know, you can see this with phone companies, you can see this with like, you know, the cancellation process takes 30 minutes, the sign up process takes five seconds. Yeah. How does it, why is it, why is this so hard to do? People get frustrated, a lot of them give up. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of this with, um, like a perfect example would be um, the GDPR compliance for cookies, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. opt-in, where it's very easy to opt into all cookies, but then if you want to opt out of the cookies, they make you pull up another window and like, understand a bunch of complicated options and deselect the ones that you don't want and then submit that, yes, I am approving that I don't want these cookies. And it's one button click to just opt in and let them have all your data. That's that's like a very common example of a dark pattern um, that you know, reputable web developers and companies that are consumer friendly try to avoid. And that brings me to our first discussion topic for this, for this article. Um, are dark patterns and deceptive behavior necessary to sell online? No. Couldn't be further the, from the truth. The answer should be obvious. Could, no, could, you don't need further. It. Couldn't be further from the truth. No, absolutely not. Um, this does come down to, well, one, uh, like we're finding out now, uh, you could find yourself in some really hot water with the government because there's some actual things that are illegal. Yeah. And um, yeah, so like not only is it bad uh, and immoral, it's also legal. Yes. Uh, so you can definitely you can definitely find yourself in some very hot water. And and more to the point, not necessary. Yeah. If you want to make the most money selling online, there are lots of good ways to engage with your audience, many of which small businesses aren't leveraging. If you want to sell more of your product online, you don't need to obfuscate the information your customers are looking for. You need to make it easier for the right customers to find a product that's the right fit. Yeah. So that means sharing more information about your product. That means putting more effort into actually selling it on your website the way you would if you were explaining to someone in person. You know, So often we see e-commerce sites with these bare bones descriptions, uh, no additional content on the product page beyond the default template. No that video been, uh, resources. Yeah. No, no additional information, hard to contact customer service. There's like common questions not being answered, the things that people care about missing or in a different place. Um, this really, really factors in, I mean, Adobe uses a subscription model. Yep. And obviously one of the biggest uh, negative impactors on revenue would be churn rate. When churn rate is how many people are choosing to leave the model. Um, so like, yes, you're getting new subscribers subscribing every month. Churn is how many of those subscribers every month are also leaving. So like you've got an influx of new and then people are dropping off. Um, you could look at that and say, well, I can prevent the people from leaving and yep. that will decrease my churn rate. Um, or you could and say instead of doing it on this side, you could say, "How do I make people want to stay? Want to stay? And not that's, can't yeah, leave. Hundred percent different thing." And that that mentality shift is like really what we're driving at by discussing this topic yeah. is you don't need to leverage dark tactics or dark patterns and shady tactics yeah. to sell more to your customers when the alternative is just to give your customers an excellent experience and sell them something that they actually want. Yeah, um, and love and, and yeah. You know, this has a big impact on your bottom line. You know, from the article, we're looking at Adobe using these dark patterns to trap people in subscriptions. Uh, one of our discussion topics is, is Adobe driving away small business with their practices? And I would argue that the answer is yes. We're seeing it in a lot of the consulting we do with small businesses. The vast, vast majority of the time, the businesses we speak to are using Canva. Internally. Yeah. And 
the we, free we version of Canva. We don't. Well, some of them are some of them paid. Some of them are paid. So I, I want to group it together, right? Because yeah. free or paid, they're on Canva. They're, they're not on, Canva. on Adobe. Yeah, they're on Canva. And when I got started in this industry, yeah, was Adobe was the gold standard. Um, you know, I used to when I started out. I used an old free version of Adobe. It was legitimate, not a pirated one, because uh, yeah. there, there was a window where Adobe was giving away access to. I think it was CS3, one of the early creative. That wasn't even subscription versions. yet. That was just this was pre-subscription, yeah. and there yeah. was an older version of Adobe that you could just use for free, and it was awesome. Um, the problem was. I was trying to work in a professional industry and collaborate with different printers and manufacturers and different people. And I realized that relying on my old version of Adobe was giving me files that weren't compatible with their versions and vice versa. And so we had all these issues connecting to each other's software. And so what did I do? I paid for the current version of Adobe and that let me participate in the industry. Anymore, we're the weird ones for still using Adobe. Yeah. And I, that depends on the space a little bit too. So like I work with a lot of companies that are, are still designing board games and sending print files over to China. And those companies are typically relying on the Adobe suite for, for their manufacturing or like for their actual like serious advanced design. Um, but your typical business owner that's like putting out pamphlets and social media templates, they're using Canva. 